Hello and welcome to my Fire Emblem Three Houses Abilities tier list. Before we start, I would like to thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon. I really appreciate the support. For more information on this and its benefits, which includes being able to vote on future tier lists each month, there is a link in the description. If you want updates on the channel to discuss this tier list or anything else on here, or just to talk about Fire Emblem in general, the Discord is a great place to be. There is a link to that in the description below. This tier list was originally streamed, but this trimmed down version still has most of the actual content, just cuts out some of the chatter, time spent googling, taking a drink, etc, as well as adding some nice visuals to tell you what each ability is quickly and easily. Let me know if this is worth doing for future lists, it did take quite a while to get it all trimmed down and edited, but I do think it was worth the effort personally, the viewing experience feels much better to me. If you do want to watch the full thing unedited, however, the link is in the description. One slight issue is that I forgot to record this locally, so I had to download the video from my own YouTube, meaning the audio tracks merged and I couldn't remove the music in the background and replace it with new unspliced music from all the cuts. So it will skip around quite a bit, I do apologise for that, it won't be the case in future lists. As for the list itself, it is considering a new game file on the maddening difficulty on Classic with no online play. The overall strength of the ability is being taken into account, as well as its attainability and its use cases. We are also not factoring in personal abilities, even if they are a variant of an ability on the tier list, such as those belonging to Ignatz or Annette. Other than that, we should be good to get into it. Yeah, I suppose we should probably get into it, because this is going to take long enough as it is and i believe the first one is movement plus one um it's good it's movement plus one it's an additional one move you're never going to be upset about that but at the same time um there's there's only so much use you're going to get out of it because of how late this ability arrives um its actual effect is really good but coming at a plus riding is just such a high investment that i don't think it can go too high it's always hard to do these first couple because we don't really have anything to sort of compare it to it's a plus riding um on the video i will probably use this little section above the chat to put what the ability is when i eventually edit this which will probably be in like eight months time knowing me but for now i'll just try and verbalize it um and make it make it clear um, so yeah, these first few are always going to be a bit weird because we don't really have a point of comparison, but I'm going to go for a B tier on this for now. We can shuffle it around if we need to. It's a good effect, but it's just... It's high investment, and it's high investment in an area which is only beneficial on a select few units. Um, so like a lot of your units are probably going to want to go flying over riding, so you probably just are never going to see this, despite the fact you would really appreciate it. Edit it when you finish watching Arcane. Yeah, Lux, that sounds about right. Um, so next up we have Avoid plus 10. Really useful ability for dodge tanking. Um, it is late. I think it's only in Wyvern Lord and Falconite. Um, I don't think it's in Wyvern Rider, if I remember correctly. But other than that, this is... It's a really useful ability for dodge tanking. It's not that useful outside of that. Like your physical... Or sorry, your player phase... Um, Flyers probably won't get too much use out of it, your Sylvains or Leonis or whatever. But for those few dodge tanks, it is actually really useful. You also don't really have to invest to get it. Um, the, the really sort of crucial thing about this, though, is it's not out of the way at all. It's in the strongest classes in the game anyway, which is very beneficial. Not having to, like, sort of deviate from any standardized path to get this or to make use of it is incredibly beneficial. With or without a Void plus 10, dodge tanks would still probably want to use Wyvern Lord or Falconite. So this is just an added boost to something that's already strong. Um, and for those reasons, I'm going to go A tier on this for now. It might shuffle down a bit later. Um, it definitely won't go up. But it might shuffle down if when we look at A tier, it, everything else looks like drastically stronger than this. But for now, we'll, we'll A tier this. I think it is notably better than move plus one. So we can put it there for now. And now we have a big list of crit abilities. So it could go B like in the long run. I'm not too sure. But I think the fact that like you sort of just get this without having to try and it's useful is just really beneficial. So, right, let's get the, um, the easy ones of these crit abilities out of the way. I think we can probably start there. Black Tone Fair Crit is bad. Um, I, I don't think there's any use for this, like, at all. 
Is a Void plus 10 on Peg Knight? Because if so, that might actually just secure it in, um... It is on Peg Knight. Oh, it's only on the enemy variant of Pegasus Knight. Um, apparently. I really wish I could just remember what was on one of the most used classes in the game. No, it is on, it is on Pegasus Knight. The wiki's just lying to me. Um, if you go on a Void plus 10, it says it's only on the enemy variant of Pegasus Knight. That's really weird. <laughs> if it's on Peg Knight, that's just even better. That's just like an added bonus. Um, but to be fair, like, a Void plus 10 on Peg Knight isn't really as relevant, um, because... You're not really dodge tanking at level 10 anyway. Like, you won't have, like, alert stance and you won't have the battalions, especially flying battalions, necessary to really make use of it. So it's more of just, like, occasionally you'll dodge an attack that isn't as important. By and large, its main uses will be on Falconite and Wyvern Lord. Uh, Black Magic Crit plus 10. So the units who get this are Edelgard, Felix, and Balthus from their budding talents. Uh, Balthus is getting zero use from this. I don't even know what his spell list consists of, but I imagine it's fairly tragic. Uh, Fire, Bolganon, and Ragnarok. Wonderful. It doesn't matter. It's okay on Felix, but doesn't he only get, like, Thorin and Thunder or something? He only gets, like, two reason spells, I think, right? I'm pretty sure I remember that. Yeah, he only gets Thorin and Thunder. Like, it's, it's okay, but, like... I don't think you should really ever be making much use of this. It's just on really awkward units to make use of it too. Like, you could maybe say, like, if Constance or, like, Dorothea got this, you might be able to at least, like, put it on to benefit from it. But I don't really think the units who get this should be using magic anyway. Yeah, exactly what Tegan said. I don't think there's a unit in the game that would make use of this well. Like, even the units that get it, even if it could benefit them, I don't think they should really be using spells. Um, yeah. This is, this is bad. Um, the other crit abilities are all much more viable. Um, sword and fist crit are worse because as weapon types, they're just less compatible. Axe, lance, and bow crit can all be used really effectively on enemy phase builds. Um, axe crit is definitely the best of the three, but I don't think any of these are going higher than B tier. I will say they're probably better than move plus, te move, move plus one. Because uh, they're just more accessible. Like, they, a unit that's going into axes will invest into axes anyway. Uh, same goes for lances and bows. Whereas, like, units that want to make use of move plus one, even, like, once they... Even if they are using riding, they don't really want to keep investing in riding for anything other than this. Whereas, this is kind of like you're just going to keep going up lances anyway, right? Or axes. So... I think, like, Bow and Axe and Lance are probably all around here somewhere. Uh, Bow and Axe should go into A, maybe? I think it might be too late in the game to go into A. Like, at S rank, it's just a bit too much. Um, like, Avoid plus 10 is late in the game, like, it's level 30, but S rank is, like, potentially last couple of chapters, potentially not even reachable. Yeah, so these are crit plus 10. There's a couple of units who make use of Lances, so Dimitri and Dudu are the two really big ones. Uh, Bernie, potentially, as well, if you're making use of Vengeance with an enemy phase build. Um, so I think, like, the Lances, they're definitely less flexible than, um, the Bows and Axes. So this is the thing, right? Like, Fist Crit is good because you can get Fierce Iron Fist and Grapplers, where you're guaranteed multi-hits, so you have more opportunity for that crit to matter. But, like, the biggest benefit of crit abilities is kind of enemy phasing. Um, and you don't really enemy phase with Gauntlets at all. I think this is largely irrelevant. I think both of these are probably C tier somewhere. Um, I don't really know which way around I would put them. They're pretty interchangeable. The Astra Crit meme builds. I guess you could, like, EP with swords. Like, there's no reason why you would, but you could. Like, I guess. They have, like, higher, like, dodge tank sword builds somewhere. People do weird sword avoid things with dancers that I think are just bad. There's actually a good point. The bow crit does carry over to player phase more because of hunter's volley in, in sniper. I can see fist better than sword. I think both of these are bad, but, like, there's more reason to make use of gauntlet crit. I, I just don't think you should really... There's, like, two units in the game that should probably keep using swords. Um, that aren't magical combat art units. Yeah, right, like, you could go ra rap it. Oh, Sword Crit is built into Sword Master, right? When you don't have Wrath or Defiant Crit, they're borderline. That's the thing, right? Like, the, the, the ultimate thing is, if, like, even if you do have Wrath or, um, Defiant Crit, these are still only making use, like, these are still only contributing one out of every ten battles. Like, it's reliability, which is really good, but, like, it's 
reliability in a game with a turn wheel, which is ultimately less impactful. Swordmaster having Crippler's Tent innately and you getting that in Chapter 4 is relevant, but it doesn't make it better than Fist Crit, I don't think. Warrior has Axe Crit, let's, which is actually important because that's where you get Wrath. Bow Crit might be... Like, Bow Crit's definitely better than Lance. Lance Crit is, like, only useful on a small handful of units. They just happen to be really good units. Um, Dimitri, Dudu, and Bernadetta. And Cyril as well, I guess, if you want Enemy Phase Cyril or Dual Phase Cyril. We'll leave it as this for now. I think this is relatively okay. Is plus one move better than plus ten crits? Um, so despite move plus one coming at an A plus rank, this is better. Like, I'd rather have move plus one than any of these. But I feel like reaching S rank in a weapon rank is more likely than reaching A plus in riding. I might be wrong about that, though. I'm just not convinced that that many units are getting move plus one. I think more are getting the crit abilities. Like, I think the crit abilities are more accessible to the units that want them. I don't know. We can keep pondering that while we move on. Uh, this is all the plus two abilities, so defense plus two, magic plus two, res plus two, speed plus two, and uh, strength plus two. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Magic plus two and strength plus two are both like S tier abilities. They're available and relevant throughout pretty much the entire game. Uh, magic plus two is slightly better because it has out of combat benefits with things like warp, things like healing, uh, little minor things like that. But like throughout, the, they're very easily attainable. You get them super early on and they are ridiculously good. You can't really shrug these abilities off. They're way too good. Uh, defense plus two is probably kind of slept on a bit, but it's still nothing earth shattering. God shattering star is appropriate given this will take forever. Yeah, we're probably going to have to start speeding up. Also, hey Ringo, hope you're doing well. Uh, res plus two is just bad. I don't see why you would ever run this. Mages aren't common enough for it to ever really be relevant. Uh, defense plus two is low B tier? Like, it's good. It's definitely got its functional uses. Early game protection tanking is, like, actually really viable if you pick this up. But it's just... It doesn't maintain its use because at a point you just either can't prop tank or there's just too many things that will screw you over. I'm not factoring Cindered Shadows in for this. I, I, um, I'll throw that one out there. <laughs> res plus two. I didn't actually know you ran Res plus two in Cindered Shadows, so that's kind of interesting. Wrath build with defense plus two, exactly taken. We had that Battalion Wrath, um... We had that Battalion Wrath defense plus two carrying us through chapter five and six. It was a great time. Uh, speed plus two is kind of bad. Uh, I, I don't... I, I don't think there's many scenarios where, like, where you really, really want to run speed plus two. Um, it's not D tier for the sole reason that you can literally just take this. It, like, it's really easy to get. And if there is a map where plus two speed would be beneficial to you, you can just slot it into your build if you can. Um, you know, you can just take it out on the, the prep screen if it's going to be useless to you. Um, that's about the only reason, and like, more to the point, you can put it in if it would help. I don't know, I don't think there's enough scenarios where this is particularly playing an impact. Um, it's also like, although it comes early, it doesn't quite come early enough. Like, if it came within like the first few chapters, it would actually be kind of okay. By the time you get it late, you just have better abilities to run. So I think Speed Plus 2 is like, solidly C tier. It, it, you will potentially have scenarios where you can get good use from it. But most of the time... Yeah, this is based on Maddening. Uh, but most of the time, like, you just aren't using this. Also, it's in Myrmidon, which is just not great. Like, at least if you go to get Defense Plus 2, you're getting Repo, which is great. I don't know. I don't think Speed Plus 2 is that useful. I don't know if this is going to be controversial, but I'm throwing Sword Avoid in D tier because everyone keeps getting baited into not using their Dancer to use Sword Avoid Dodge Tanks. And no, it, no, um, no. Uh, White Magic Avoid is also garbage. Um... I think I'm just tainted by this because every time I see it, I remember that Dorothea gets it despite her only offensive magic spell being um, Nosferatu. Um, then I think that just kind of like tilts me. So I don't think any of those are particularly good. I don't know who's using reason dodge tanks, but don't. Um, let's just throw all of these in here. Bob Byleth using it. Uh... 
I don't know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't made great use of white or black magic avoid, so if anyone has, like, use cases for these that might bump them up to C tier, like, I'm happy to hear them. Um, yeah, Myrmidon's position ability is swap. I mean, swap's still good, but it's not, like, repo's really good. So two tile shift. Um, two tile shift movement ability is really nice. Magic avoid is... I just can't see a scenario where you've got a magic unit trying to... The problem with, like, a magical dodge tank, like, in theory, is that magical units can't really get killer weapons. So even if, like, you had, like, Happy with Batrath, for example... I know she's a dark mage, but just roll with it. Like, even if you had, like, Happy with Batrath... Like, what... Sh how's she killing? Like, what's she doing to the res respond to the units who she's dodge tanking? Yeah, I could see Brawl Avoid, like, here... Like, I don't think it's ever particularly great. But if you're using gauntlets anyway, and you did pick it up, it would save you a bit of health in time, I, I guess. Like, if you needed to be in range of some enemies after you fierce iron fist someone, being able to dodge them is nice. I think that's pretty fair. Um, we probably need to speed this up a bit, because there are eight bajillion abilities in this game. I mean, look at all this. How'd you get Brawl Avoid? You get Brawl Avoid from Mastering War Monk and War Cleric. Hey, thank you for the sub. Uh, did that pop up? Oh, it did. It's just over. It's it's there. It's there. You can see it now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Crit Plus 20 is, like, useful on quite a few units. It's just a shame it's kind of locked to War Master, like a level 30 class with... I, I don't want to say, like, it's bad, but I think most units would prefer to be in a Wyvern. Uh, yeah, you can get... You get the DLC classes in the main game, so yeah, I think we probably should count them. This this is really hard to judge. So you will get Crit Plus 20 before these, and it is better. But it's locked to Warmaster, which kind of sucks. Um, not that Warmaster's bad, it's just not Wyvern. And not Falconite. And not Sniper. And not the other classes which you would much rather be in. Like, mm, practically everyone who goes Warmaster will get good use of this. But it's still Warmaster exclusive. Being Warmaster exclusive, by the way, is significantly worse than being, like, Wyvern or Falconite exclusive. I assume that's obvious, but I, I just don't want that to get lost. Warmaster being gender locked outside of F Byleth, like I said, also hurts it. Yeah, no, it's only F Byleth and um, NG Plus, too, which um, doesn't help. Uh, I am generally considering this to be a new game tier list. I just think it's too much investment for it to actually go high. Like, you have to get two A rank skills, and then you have to sit in Warmaster. Warmaster's not bad, though, is the thing. It's just not, like, the only reason you would go into Warmaster is for crit plus 20. I think we'll put it there. Um, yeah, like, it's crit on Caspar and Raphael. Uh, stop making to do a Warmaster, make him a Wyvern Rider, it's better. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it sits here. Hit plus 20 is here, and we can just put it there. We don't need to discuss hit plus 20. Um, if anyone has any issues with that one, you're wrong. Um, let's move on. Dex plus four, a uh, very, very, very tangentially useful occasionally. Um, most of the time, I mean, it's three stats, it's four points of hit, it's like a extra damage on Frozen Lance if you want it. Like, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's easy to get, which makes it better than like Brawl Avoid. It probably makes it better than these. Honestly, speed plus two might be better than these as well because you get it so much earlier. Like, wait, which plus twos are we talking? Because Dex plus four is definitely not better than like defense or strength or... Magic plus two, I don't think. It's definitely not better than Strength or Magic. Like, Strength or Magic plus two are really, really good abilities. Yeah, it's like one point of Frozen Lance damage. Or, like, a couple of points of hit. I'm glad you pointed out that this was Pomp and Circumstance, because I genuinely had no idea. Like, Defense plus two is measurable, right? So, like, you can see when you need this. You can see when you load into a map. Death is better than Dex, but Res and Speed are below. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that completely. Um, So, Defense is measurable. So, when you, like, load into a map, you can see, like, oh... Do I need this plus two defense to be able to completely shrug off some hits or to be able to, you know, more effectively protection tank these enemies? And you can put it in if you do. Um, whereas dex plus four is kind of like a complete ambiguity. Um, like how much is plus four dex going to help you when you load into a map? You actually kind of have no idea. Um, like you can see whether it will help you guarantee certain hits or things like that. But like it's probably hitting anyway, right? Like it's, it's just more ambiguous. So I think like this is definitely better. Um... What on earth does Pomp and Circumstance do? I know it's not good. Increases Luck and Charm by 4. Wonderful. Charm plus 4 is kind of nice. I guess. What classes is this in? It's the Mastery Skill of Armored Lord Hyla... Okay, no. Get down here. 
Uh, it's in Wyvern Master. You're probably not using it at that point in the game anyway, though, right? Like, only the house leaders get it. They own Two of them only get it from mastering bad classes. And you get it way too late for it to be useful. Like, this is just all bad all the time, right? Also, thank you for the sub. I just completely heard the noise and just completely blanked. This is way too late in the game. Its benefit isn't good enough for that point in time. And two of the, like, two of the house leaders, you get it for mastering a terrible class. Yeah, no, don't use this. Uh, HP plus five is, like, comfortably A tier. It's so available, it can't be any lower. Um, its benefit is mixed. You have a couple of units, namely Dudu and Bernie, who love it. Like, this this is better than the Void Plus 10. It definitely gets scrapped later, right? Like, no one's running this into the late game, but, like, you get it from Chapter 2 on, like, Edelgard and... Actually, you can get it from, like, the Mock Battle on, like, Edelgard and, like, Byleth and Dimitri and Claude. Maybe a couple of other units as well can get it in time for Chapter 2. Like, it's, it's just so available that, like, you might as well use it and you will get benefit from it at certain points in time. Um... It's also not out of the way at all. Like, every unit will get this. And, yeah, it's definitely better than Avoid Plus 10 just because it's around more. Like, literally every unit will run this for a solid, like, 6, 7, 8, 9 chapters. Like, it's gotta be A tier. Um, I don't know if this is a hot take or not. Alert stance just don't use, like, regular alert stance. This thing's garbage. Avoid Plus 15 is not worth losing your player phase for. This is bad. Don't please use this. Um, Alert Stance Plus is good on like three or four units, maybe slightly more than that, and it has a massive cost associated with it. First of all, to get it, uh, it's like what A plus flying, and then it's you also can't you don't get it when you have a player phase. Yeah, Alert Stance Plus is thirty avoid uh, when you when you wait. I'm tempted to go here because it's really good. But it's really good for a really high cost. Which is just kind of fair and balanced. I think this is probably reasonable. Like, for what it gives, like, Hilda, Petra, potentially Bernadetta, like, it's tempting to put it A tier. Potentially Claude, actually, as well. But, like, I just don't think there's any reason to make use of it. Or, like, not that there's, like, on anyone else, I should say. There's no reason to make use of it on anyone else. And the cost for those units to make use of it is huge. I'm going to pull all the bat skills up here now because we might as well go through them all together. Where is Batrath? Hello, Batrath. I found you. Oh, these are all the battalion skills. It's just like I forget that other ones exist. Uh, Ingrid, maybe I'm... I. We will talk about Ingrid now because we have Battalion Desperation, which is literally the most slept on ability on the game um, for Ingrid specifically and also like Yuritsa, I guess. And forgetting dying as a thing, only if like you don't have a player phase. Like, it's not like it's always active. Like, sacrificing your player phase is a huge loss. Like, Leone isn't getting this. Byleth isn't getting this. Like, because losing your player phase is huge. Like, Bernie isn't making use of this. Like, it's it's kind of huge. Uh, Battalion Desperation is insane on specifically Ingrid and also kind of Yuritsa and also, I guess, Leone. Um, and I don't know where to put it. It's really, really good on, like, three units. Uh, Bat Desp Leone is better than Point Blank Volley Leone, almost categorically. Um, it just is. It's just harder to hit. Like, it requires a little bit more work. Um, I'm kind of tempted to do this, honestly, with Battalion Desperation. I think this ability is hella underrated. Right, but taking enemy phases to clear a map isn't just because of Alert Stance Plus. Like, it has a massive cost associated with it, and it, on its own, all it's giving you is 30 avoid. Like, you still need to find another 90, 100 avoid from somewhere to effectively dodge tank. Video on Battalion Desperation will be coming at some point. The video on Battalion Desperation needs to come before I can break down Ingrid, and I really want to break down Ingrid. Um, because Ingrid is, like, after I did my tier list, I went back and looked at Ingrid, and she has gone up fairly substantially. Um, but yeah, I think this is really good on a select few units, and most of the time, you probably aren't getting too much use out of it, but on Ingrid, Leone, Yuritsa, Shamir, maybe? You can get, like, really good value out of Battalion Desperation. Uh, defensive Tactics is good selectively. Um, it's, like, I make use of it quite a bit because I like Protection Tanks for some reason, so I want to put it here, but that's wrong. Um, so we're going to put it, like, here, because that's probably more correct. Um, it is a convenience thing, and specifically to me, I really hate Battalion juggling. I just find it annoying and not fun. So 
I make use of this probably more than most people do. Yeah, because those four units double, they get Darting Blow. Uh, Byleth gets it as well, but like really late. But yes, it is really good on Byleth. Um, Byleth's also less like not that fast if you don't invest into her speed, like reasonably though. But yeah, I think defensive tactics is good. But I, it's it's not like game defining or anything. You'll get some use out of it, but nothing earth shattering or anything like that, right? Uh, A-plus flying is not halfway through Peg and Wyvern. Wyvern is A-flying. Uh, model leader is really situational. Also, like, being able to clear maps slowly is not that great of a thing. Like, every unit can slowly clear maps. Yeah, Wyvern Rider is C and Wyvern Lord is A. This is fine. Like, it levels up your battalions a bit quicker. Sure. I, I, I have no real attachment to model leader. It's nice for leveling up battalions later in the game. Um... If you do Orcs battles quite a lot, I guess you can use this to power level new battalions you get. I don't really do Orcs battles, so this can sit there, I guess. Oh yeah, but you're not getting flying to A plus on most units, right? Like flying to A plus is from from A to A plus is a massive amount of investment difference. Offensive tactics I've literally never used. If anyone has any case to make for offensive tactics, I would um, be glad to hear it because I've I've never used this ability. 20 hit is nice, but S plus authority is a ridiculously high, um... Uh, offensive tactics gives 5 might and 20 hit when using gambits, and you get it from S plus authority. Um, yeah, I genuinely, I'm not making this up, I've never used this, I don't think I've ever gotten a unit to S plus authority. There's, there's no point. I, battalion renewal is also bad. Um, this saves, like, a minuscule amount of gold throughout a run. No. Two big ones then, Battalion Vantage and Battalion Wrath. It's time to upset people. Uh, Battalion Vantage is not a good ability. I, I, I don't see why you'd ever use this. Regular Vantage is really fair. It's better than some of these. Um, I would probably make more use of defensive tactics than Battalion Vantage, I'll be completely honest. Um, but Vantage is so attainable. Like, you get it from Mercenary, which is incredibly easy to get to. And it's also, like, innate in Hero. I, I don't think there's any reason to ever use Battalion Vantage. Uh, Battalion Wrath is really, really good, but it is really high investment. Like, you have to Master Warrior, which is kind of a terrible class. Uh, for the point in time, it's a terrible class. Like, compared to, like, Paladin, Sniper, Grappler, Wyvern Rider. Like, there's significantly better things than Warrior. And then it isn't functional really on its own. You need a lot to make Battalion Wrath work. Like, you obviously need some form of, of survival, right? So, Vantage or Dodge Tanking or Prot Tanking. And then you would need um, other things to amplify your crit, right? So you need killer weapons, you need battalions, you need you know, crit rings, you need the stats, you need all this stuff, or you need defiant crit, or things like that. Like, there's a lot that goes into making Battalion Wrath works for how cost-effective it is. Wrath is the Warrior Mastery. Sorry, um, yeah, I was thinking regular Wrath for a second there, but, like, um, Bat Wrath is only C plus authority, right? But it still has all of the other costs associated with it. It needs... Um, it needs all of... Let's just do regular Wrath now, because it makes sense. Let's also just do regular Vantage now, because it makes sense to do. We can do regular Desperation too. Let's do all of these together, because they're all very similar, and there's no point in making all the same points twice. So, Battalion Wrath is obviously significantly better, because you just get it from Authority, and it's active from turn one, like, you don't have to set it up in-map. But it still needs a lot to make it work. It isn't independent. Um, you need a lot of things around it to really maximize it. I'm going to put it A tier above a Void plus 10. It's probably better than HP plus 5, isn't it? I think a lot of people would expect Battalion Wrath to go here. I don't know if that's, like, just me misreading the perception of Battalion Wrath, though. Like, it's really good, but it just needs a lot of help to actually get things out of it. It's A in a couple of cases, yeah. Like, I think it's A on a net. Uh, if Battalion Advantage and Battalion Wrath were together, like, if every unit got this, they would be here because they would be broken. But, like, they're not, so... I think that's really, really fair. Um, Battalion Wrath is literally pretty much, like, these. Like, specifically, it's really similar to Alert Stance. Like, it's really expensive. What you get from it is really good, but it is a lot of cost associated with it. Um, it can't go higher than B tier for me. Like, it's incredibly good, but it's also incredibly expensive. It's fair. It's balanced. The Wrath build with Bat Wrath is so funny. I absolutely love that build, and I'm so glad it worked. 
Like, nothing makes me happier than the fact that that prop tank Raphael worked. Regular Vantage is better than the Battalion variant. I keep saying Batrath and Wrath the wrong way round. I'm hoping context makes it make sense. If not, when I edit this for a video, just find a way to clean it up, future me. Uh, regular Vantage is good. Um, it's really easily attainable. It combos well with Wrath most obviously, but like... You can get other merit out of it. The fact it's so easy to get probably should bump it above the crit abilities. Like, even if you aren't running Batrath with it, you can probably get some use out of just Vantage, right? It's probably fair. I think Battalion Desperation is better. I think Regular Wrath's better too. That is the Desperation icon. Why do they all look so similar? Please help me. Um, thank you. Uh, regular Desperation's bad. There still only are a few people who can double on Maddening. I mean, it depends on the stage of the game, to be fair. Like, in the mid-game, basically everyone can double. Like, from around chapter, like, 6 to around chapter, like, 15, doubling is kind of not too hard. Because the enemies weigh themselves down with heavy weapons that they don't really have the strength to use. It kicks up a bit, like, around, like, the Bridge of Muradin, Gronda 2, like, around that point in time. But, like, doubling for a lot of the game isn't really that bad. Especially for females with, um, Darting Blow. So, like, like Petra, Leone, Ingrid, um... Female Byleth to a point, uh, Catherine, Shamir, if you take her into Pegasus Knight. Like, there's a lot of units that can actually double. Um, Desperation isn't here. Uh, it's like... I'd take Speed Plus 2 over Desperation, honestly. Uh, regular Desperation is just really weirdly out of the way, because if you want to make use of Desperation, you need to master probably Pegasus Knight to get Darting Blow. So then you'd have to master Pegasus Knight and Cavalier and Brigand and Archer. And, like, you, yeah, well, that's just too much. Um... It's just unfortunately in a cluster of classes that are all really good. Okay, let's go through all the blows. Uh, the biggest nerf they did to Ferdinand probably is make him a boy and put him in um, Black Eagles. He would have been a lot better in any other house. Um, Darting Blow is really good, but being female locked kind of sucks. Death Blow is S tier, Magic Blow is S tier, Fiendish Blow, whatever it's called. Azure right now, like you're like my favorite person alive ever. Um, thank you for saving me looking that up. Um, I really appreciate it. Uncanny Blow is probably A tier, honestly. Um, we'll go into more detail on these once I've actually, like, figured out where they're all going. Uh, Armor Blow is, like, okay-ish, but not really. It's kind of bad. Um, these crit abilities have slipped a little bit low, by the way. They're better than, like, Model Leader. These are just... bad? Uh, Death and Fiendish Blow are probably higher than Strength plus 2, but I think they're worse than Magic plus 2? I don't know if that's controversial. Uncanny and Darting Blow are both really good, but being female looked kind of, like hinders their availability a bit. They're both mastery abilities. Uncanny Blow being a mastery ability of a level 20 class is also kind of, like, bad. Darting Blow is better than Avoid plus 10. Darting Blow is also better than HP plus 5. Duelist and Warding Blow. Uh, Duelist Blow gives you 20 Avoid when you initiate combat, I'm fairly sure. Is it 30? Oh, I thought it was 20. My bad. Um, either way, they're, they're bad. Um, <laughs> they're not, they're not great anyway. It is plus 20. Okay, 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 cool. Does anyone have any major disagreements about the placing of any of those? Because I just whizzed through them kind of quick, but I think they're I honestly just think they're kind of accurate. Trickster Mastery is better than Mortal Savant Mastery. True. I mean, I'm not really ordering the bottom tier, to be honest. I'm just kind of just throwing things in there. Mastering a level 20 class is, like, better than mastering a level 30, for sure. Um, Trickster also gives you Foul Play, which, I mean, like, is actually a useful ability. Breaker Skills. Sword Breaker is probably the best, because it has one map where it's really, really good. I don't think any of these are going particularly high. Um, Swordbreaker is absolutely clutch on, clutch on, um, AM13. Um, if you've used Swordbreaker on AM13, that map goes from being really annoying to, like, actually really manageable. There are enough Axe and Lance enemies for these to be somewhat relevant. If this doesn't exist. Am I losing my mind? This isn't a real ability. There's no such thing as Fistbreaker. That doesn't... Am I going... I must be... Please, somebody confirm to me that this doesn't exist. I'm losing my mind. This isn't real, right? Okay, this isn't real. <laughs> um, okay. It's only on enemy, right? Okay, got you, got you, got you. Unused or enemy, okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's throw this down here. We're not ranking that. It's not even D tier. You literally can't get it. Tomebreaker is possibly useful. It's like C tier at best, right? I'm tempted to stop ordering C tier because it's like, who really cares? Um, it's probably worse than Speed Plus 2. It's probably worse than Regular Desperation. It's probably better than Armored Blow. Isn't Bowbreaker... Yeah, it's Warlock. That's where Bowbreaker comes from. Um, 
yeah, no. Tonebreaker is, like, kind of saved because of the fact it comes from grapplers, but other than that, like, eh. Fistbreaker would be dope if it were good, because endgame grapplers and warmasters are actually really problematic. Um, it would be really nice. Like, you wouldn't run it all the time, but there are definitely maps where you could definitely make use of it. Yeah, these three are actually good. Swordbreaker is the best of the three because of AM13, pretty much specifically. Um, you can get use out of these two, but, like, I don't know. You can slot them in on certain maps if there's a particularly problematic enemy. Again, it's the similar thing to what I've said about a couple of abilities. Being able to just see when you need them. Like, you'd run Swordbreaker on the maps with Petra, for example, if you planned on killing her. I don't know if this is controversial or not. Kanto is the best ability in the game. Um, this thing's broken. Um, it's really, really good. Like, really, really good. Like, insanely, this is the best ability in the game. I... I, I don't know if that's going to be the widely regarded opinion, but I'm pretty sure that's where it goes. You can get this from level 10 on Pegasus Knight and Cavalier, so it comes earlier than hit plus 20. It's technically class locked, but it's class locked to about 50 million classes, so that's kind of irrelevant. And it's class locked to, like, good classes as well. It doesn't take up an ability slot, it's a class ability on literally every scenario. Yeah, honestly, like, if we're being completely faithful here, we should maybe do this. We should do this. And we should do this. Because these are a tier above the other abilities in that tier. I think that's probably a fair thing to do, to be honest. I think it's like a, a much more fair way of getting it. Um, I'm not factoring fetters into this, but the fact that fetters of Dromi gives Kanto is absolutely broken. It doesn't technically actually give the ability, but it's really, really insane. But yeah, these are the two best abilities in the game, like by a country mile. Just keep using them. Uh, fire is really slept on. Um, this is actually a really relevant ability for Mage to have. It gives, like, because fire is a 90 accuracy spell, it gives every Dark Mage, so Huber, Happy, Lysithia, and every Mage that's stuck with Thunder, like Constance or Dorothea, just access to a more accurate spell for chip damage at a point in time when that's basically what they're doing. I'm going to stick it, like... Does fire go here? I'd take it over the crits. It's really relevant. Like, if you go through a playthrough and actually see how many times you use fire because of the mage class, it's a lot higher than you think. Like, you do use this so much. It's really good. Like, it is also often the mage's lightest spell, which is, like, really relevant for doubling armor knights at some point in the game. It's just good, like, all around. Doubling the uh, the fire uses is also, like, a nice little side benefit, I guess, for the units that already have fire. I don't tend to run out of fires, but if you play, like, slower or something like that, like, I can understand it being very useful. I personally would take it over the crit and breakers. Actually, I kind of want to do that. Swordbreaker is better than these. <laughs> like, this is map changing on specifically one map. This is helpful on a lot of maps. And, like, really good on a few other maps. Heal is not as good as fire. Heal's probably like top of C, maybe bottom of B. Yeah, it's probably top of C. I don't think heal's in B tier. Because the point where you get heal, like, a unit that's like a going priest is probably a dedicated healer. If a unit's a dedicated healer, they probably have physic, um, presumably, if you're going priest to actually get heal, or bishop, I guess. And if you have heal and physic, that's already 15 heals. Like, I, I really don't think you're ever needing 25 heals in a map. Fire is significantly better than Miasma in terms of the ability. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I, I tend to rate healing in general a lot lower than a lot of people seem to. So I don't know if, like, this is, like, potentially controversial. But, like, also, just to throw a point out there, I don't think you're ever qualifying for Priest without already having access to heal. So the fact it grants access to heal is kind of completely pointless. I don't know. This just isn't as good. Like, this isn't giving anybody a spell that they don't already have, I don't think. Because you can't get into its classes without having enough magic to already have heal. I don't know, it's a really weird one. Doubling healing uses is actually probably less useful than a lot of these abilities. I'm gonna throw it here. Eh, just throw it here. Throw it here. There. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. How many more have we got? Oh my god, there's so many abilities in this game. Miasma is okay? I just want to check something with Miasma. Is it also in Dark Bishop or is it only in Dark Mage? It is also in Dark Bishop. Okay, this is kind of bad. It's like, it's probably better than heal because there will be scenarios where having Miasma actually helps. 
It's, it's not much better than heal. It's like there. Being in Dark Mage and Dark Bishop is just so out of the way because you don't really ever want to go into those classes anyway. Dark Bishop is borderline irrelevant because you're not really that bothered about Miasma at that point in time anyway. I'm not even sure this is better than heal. I'm I'm going to put it below heal. Screw it. I think you're more likely to get use out of heal because at least Priest is a class that you click on rather than Dark Mage and Dark Bishop, which, I mean, does anyone use these classes? Is anyone frequently going outside of wanting to specifically use a Dark Mage or a Dark Bishop for, like, because you've never used it or for fun? Does anyone go in into these classes for, like, any reason? I prefer Fire and Human. Yes, there is not a single unit in the game who would rather have double Miasmas than Fire. There is also not a single unit in the game who would rather have Miasma than Fire outright. So the only units this really benefits are the units who start with Fire, and those units still don't want to go Dark Mage or Dark Bishop. What are people's opinions on Close Counter? Things kind of like the ultimate filler ability, right? Exactly, right? Like, you might go into it for a meme or to, like, get a funny ability that you want to try out, but, like, I don't think anyone's going into it to actually be in the class. Um... This is just kind of like, yeah, the ultimate filler ability. It's like a better dex plus four. Like, you'll get it at some point and you'll slap it on, and then when you take it out, you don't care at all. Like, it's, it's just, like, so meh. Like, not there. It's probably, like, here. I don't think it's, like, ever terribly useful. It's, like, okay-ish if you, like, if a retribution wears off and you forget about it or something like that. Um, or, like, maybe pre-chapter 8, but then, at the same time, like, you can so easily play around it. You can trade swap your weapons, you can... I don't know. I just don't really ever get too much use out of close counter. This counter-attack? Is this your Ritzer only? There's no other way to get this, right? It's just Mastering Death Knight. Ah, uh, like, very bottom of C. It's super high investment, incredibly late game on literally one unit, and all it does is mean you don't have to use Retribution on them. Chalice? Does the Chalice actually give you the counter-attack ability, or is it linked to the item? Is it like the Fetters of Dromi? It's just like, it's like the Fetters, right? So I don't think we should count that in necessarily. Even if we do, it doesn't change anything. It's very questionably here. I'm tempted to just throw it down here. On the shortest route as well, yeah. If you use, if you got counter-attack on your Ritza, do you even use it? Because like, Counter-attack only really matters if you're EPing, right? Close combat. My favorite Pokemon move. <laughs> I, lo I made that same error in um, one of the breakdowns I did. I love that error. It's funny. Like, even if I got counter, I'm not even sure I'm using it. Because you don't even really use it on an enemy phase unit. I don't think Yuritsa gets Battalion Wrath. Because he gets Battalion Des... Oh, no, wait. Does he get Battalion Desperation? He does, right? Um, so you'd have to get Wrath, and then you'd probably want to get Vantage. That would be so out of the way for a unit that joins on Chapter 30. I don't think uh, this is good. Uh, I, I, I don't think this is good. It sucks because it's cool, and it's really good when the enemies have it. But it's it's not good, is it? This is... Mm. Uh, I'm going to put Aegis and Pervise down here, um, and we can just move on. Yurisa does have that Wrath? Okay. That makes it slightly more useful. I'm not entirely sure it takes it out of C tier still, but it does make it slightly more useful. Um, Defiant abilities. Um, do we have to? Exactly, right? Like, Retribution works on... Retribution hits six people. Like, it's really so questionable. Okay, so let's get the easy ones out of the way. Defiant resistance is bad. Defiant defense is also bad. Is any... Is, is there any use of the, like, um... Defiant Magic. I really don't use these, like, at all. This is also bad, right? Defiant Magic Lysithia. That's not sounding like a great use case of Defiant Magic. <coughs> you get it from Mastering Grem? Nah. Nah, that's, 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 that's... Defiant Magic boosts visible magic. Is that true? If Defiant Magic boosts visible magic, I will put it bottom of C tier. Because it boosts warp range. That actually would slightly matter a little bit. I could see, like, a magical vantage unit with, like, Battalion Wrath or something, like, Happy or something maybe working with it. If that boosts Warp Range, it genuinely... It does boost Warp... Okay, that's actually, like, reasonably... Yeah, a, a boost of 2 to your Warp Range is actually reason enough for it to be C tier. Defiant Speed and Strength? Um, 
I don't use these. Defiant Avoid is like I've messed around with. It's okay-ish. It's also the most annoying ability in the game to set up because for it to work, you like for to, if you're using Defiant Avoid, you're probably running a dodge tank. This means you need to get below 25% HP on a dodge tank. Dodge tanks, fairly explicably, dodge units or dodge attacks. So you have to get below 25 HP on a unit who's built to dodge attacks is just really annoying. I don't think I can put something D tier because it annoys me, but it, it is annoying. I could see Defiant Speed being really good on like Leone or like Ingrid or Shamir potentially. Like, I think it would be really funny. I might do Defiant Speed, Battalion, Desperation, Shamir in the uh, the Crimson Flower run we've got going at the minute. I think it would be really fun. Like, Defiant Speed, Battalion, Desperation. Aegis is C tier. Maybe, at least it comes from Mastering Paladin, right? Which is actually, like, a good class. It is notably better than Pavus. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm fine with Aegis going C tier. Uh, Defiant Avoid, can we just C-tier this thing and move on? It's probably better than these, right? It's better than Brawl Avoid, it's better than Miasma, Heal, Armored Blow. Tonebreaker, Desperation, Speed Plus 2, Model Leader, the Bad Crits. It's probably there. Can I put it there and we move on? I'm putting it there, we're moving on. Defiant Crit has uses. Uh, at least it comes from Wyvern Lord. Same as, like, this comes from Falconite, right? So, that's actually kind of nice. Defiant Crit comes from Wyvern Lord, which actually benefits it quite a lot, because it comes from the class you probably want to use it in anyway. Um, it's probably still kind of bad. Um, but Defiant Crit, Battalion Wrath, Wrath, like, at least Wrath and Defiant Crit come from the same, um, the same thing. Uh, Defiant Crit can go... There? There? I agree with what um, Aikichi just said. It's really hard to rank these skills because they're either useless or just an insane boost to like already existing good strategies. I'm fine with these just going here. I I think Defiant Speed could be really fun, but I don't actually think it's good. I don't know. Let's throw it down here. Defiant Strength. Anyone got any arguments to make for why Defiant Strength is good? I'll throw it here and people can make points for Defiant Strength if they want to. Plus eight for Switch Strikes. You could actually get use out of this, couldn't you? We've been doing this for so long. All my days. How many more do we have? Oh my god, we slow. Okay, at least we've got like a bunch of fairs, a bunch of rallies, a bunch of prowesses. Like, those all fly through. So what are we saying for Defiant Strength? Are we saying it's like better than some of these? I have no experience with this ability. I apologize for like relying on chat for this one, but are we, are we saying it's like better than Model Leader? Are we saying it's better than the crits? You like it more than Defiant Crit? Okay. That sounds like a bold statement. I mean, I'm not against it, I just haven't used it. Defiant Crit comes from Wyvern Lord, which is later, but at least it's in the way. Same. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think I can go bottom of B. Dex plus 4 is too high, though. <laughs> I can do top of C. I can maybe do top of C. If a lot of people are saying this is better, I'll put this top of C and just say this one might be wrong. Uh, I have complete ignorance to this ability because I don't tend to go hero. And apparently it's something I need to play around with. Because, like, a Defiant Strength, like, Grappler or something sounds like it could be really fun. I'm liking these arguments for Defiant Strength, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm really tempted to try this thing out now. So if we went like a Defiant Strength Ignatz and then just like pivoted back to Sniper with Hunter's Volley, we'd just and then we just like get chunked down and we just have an extra eight strength on Hunter's Volley. Balthus EP build. I don't think Balthus needs Defiant Strength on an EP build. I think he just kills everything anyway. Our music stopped again. I'm just gonna continuously replay this video. Um, it's called Epic and Motivational Fire Emblem Three Houses OST by Yoon Chia. Um, if you want to look it up. Thank you for providing background noise for this. Fair skills are so weird to judge because half of these are like... Uh, so bow fair is really good because it's on Sniper. Let's just try and put these in some sort of order. It's probably something like this, right? Like, I mean, I like them outside of classes. I just don't think you're ever getting them. Okay, how much of this Bowfair placement being above Axefair is literally just because of Shamir? Bowfair is top of B at least. I agree. This is literally being carried by Shamir, but I think it goes A. Axefair is really good because it's on good classes like Wyvern Lord and Wyvern Rider and um, War Master. Shamir is the only character who can reasonably get a fair skill. True. Claude actually does get really good use of Bowfair too, actually, because of Barbarossa. That is completely true. Um... Axfair is so prevalent that, like, it's probably the only one of these you're seeing frequently outside of Bowfair. So I'm going to say that's probably A tier 2. 
Fistfire and Landsfire beats Axefire because Grave Fire is a plus 10. Uh, I would actually possibly agree with Fistfire because Grappler is really good. Um, and Fierce Iron Fist is better. All of these are better than Uncanny Blow and Avoid plus 10, by the way. I think Landsfire is worse, but it is really good in Falconite and Paladin. I just think they're less viable classes than Bow Knight, Sniper, Wyvern Lord, Rider, Warmaster. Well, Falconite isn't less viable than all of those, but you know, it's female locked, it's gender locked. Uh, Aegis is in C tier. No, it isn't. Did I move up Defiant Defense instead of Aegis? I'm an idiot. Right, there we go. Um, or oh, Defiant Resistance, sorry, instead of Aegis. That's my mistake. I apologize. Yeah, exactly. Landsfire is good for Swift Strikes. It's good for any units you make Paladins, but, like... The thing is, even the Swift Strikes users still want to go Wyvern Lord. Like, Sylvain, Ferdinand, they still set up. They all still want to go Wyvern Lord. Which is the biggest issue. Like, the main units who get use out of this are, like, Bernie? And... Dimitri? Who doesn't really need it. Um, in fact, neither of those units really need it. They're both killing everything anyway. If Dimitri, Ferdinand, Seteth, Cyril, Dadu, everyone could go, like, Falconite, this would be here. For sure. But they can't. So that's not. All of these are better than Uncanny Blow. Um, all of these are also better than Avoid Plus 10. Great Knight has Lancefair is not moving Lancefair anywhere, I'm afraid. Uh, Swordfair is low B purely because Catherine gets it early, otherwise it would just be C tier. I think Lancefair is below Wrath, etc. That is... I could honestly put Lancefair here. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think this... I, I just don't think you get enough units who really make use of it. Ingrid makes good use of it. That's a good one. I'm trying to find... Re it's probably better than these. Probably better than Battalion Death. More units get use of Lancefair than get use of Battalion Desperation. In fact, Battalion Desperation should go behind Fire. And so should Vantage. Um, that looks a lot better than what I had a second ago. Swordfair is literally here because Catherine gets it early. Otherwise, it would be, like, here. Um, but it's, it can sit there. I don't think there are really any, ever any uses. Oh, Mortal Savant is actually really good with this as well. But, again, similar to Battalion Desperation, I need to make a Mortal Savant video to go into that point more. I think this, I still think Fistfair should be above Axefair. It's a really interesting one, right? Because Axefair is probably used on more units, but Fistfair does get, like, the Grappler, Fierce Iron Fist bonus. It's always Brave affecting on player phase. I could honestly see that. I don't hate it. Like, at all. I think this is more available, but I think when you actually make use of Fistfair, it's better. Assassin is okay, but, like, it's also kind of sad. Fistfair and Axefair interchangeable. Well, yes, I agree. Bowfair might be better than HP plus 5. Purely because I think there's a gap between Bowfair and these. And I kind of want that to be better reflected in the list. Um, 35 people are here watching me tier abilities. I, I, I thank you. I, I don't know what to say, but thank you. No HP plus 5 there because you get it so early and it's just so prevalent like throughout the entire game. Um, Does anyone have any case for Dark Tome Fair or faith tome fair black tome fair is actually good the other two are way too inaccessible to ever be my question is who gets dark tome fair like where do you get is it on a class is it i don't use the dark mage classes enough is it on dark knight or something i don't even know why i asked that because i know the answer to that question okay so it's on edelgard happy hubert lysithia and yuritsa and it's on dark knight uh, what Rise said is actually really true. HP plus 5 is really relevant to majors surviving early game hits. Black Tone Fair is better than a lot of this, honestly. Like, it's it's kind of fine. Again, I need to make a Mortal Savant video because I think it's kind of slept on, but it is good in that class on a couple of units too. Uh, Constance and Dorothea especially. Darkflyer gets this as well, right? Warlock? It's kind of nice. It's nice and accessible. It's not out of the way. Like, it's kind of on the classes you would want to be in anyway. This is really harsh. I'm going to put it below Swordfair. I think that's probably fair, right? Yeah, Dark Knight, Dark Flyer, Mortal Savant getting this is actually relevant. Mortal Savant is still slept on. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep preaching this until I manage to turn people around on Mortal Savant. Dark Time Fair is just too out of the way to actually be anywhere higher than like this. We'll stick it with it just in the middle of CT. I, I can't be bothered to keep ordering CT. This is bad. I meant black when I said dark. I am just bad with words. So White Magic Health plus 5 is on Priest, and White Magic Health plus 10 is on Bishop, which is what I thought was the case. White Magic Heal plus 5 is going to be higher. 
Because 5 healing in the early game or like the early mid game is more relevant than 10 healing when you're in Bishop. Um, so heal plus 5 is free in Priest, which is probably the class you want to go into anyway. With your healing units. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Are your healing units going into Priest? It depends on the healing unit. Because a lot of your healing units will just go into Mage for Fiendish Blood. Maybe heal plus 10 is actually better, because your healing units actually want to go in Bishop for Faith Spells times 2. Whereas I'm not entirely sure your healing units most of the time are going into Priest. Like, Linhart is, because he wants to just rush Warp and doesn't want to invest in Reason. But both Marianne and Mercedes do better in Mage. I'd want Fiendish Blow on Linhart, but I'm just pressing the Faith button until he gets Warp. You can just swap into Priest later for the lols. Even then, I'd rather have Fire than Health plus 5, but... Linhart gets stuck in Bishop anyway, true. I don't think either of these are higher than B for me. Um, my voice is cracking like crazy. Um, they're not, like, bad skills by any means. They're passive and they're good. But I don't think either of them are particularly impactful. Um, the Bishop one is probably more relevant because a couple of units do get stuck in Bishop. Um, notably Linhart, but also a couple of others who, like, might need to be in Bishop for a bit while they get to Grem. Uh, Lysithia, Happy, etc. Just because they want those double warps. Um... But I don't think either of these are particularly relevant. Meh, most of your healers should probably just hit Grem. Or just go Dark Flyer. Extra healing just really isn't that valuable for me because, like, there's so many ways to heal in this game. Um, it's probably the biggest issue I have with, like, Mercedes, but, like, when you have, like, if you're running, like, say, four mages, all of them can heal. Like, one of them healing five extra just, or ten extra just isn't a big deal. These being higher than the Breaker skills feels a bit much. Or this Breaker skill, at least, being seems a bit much. Let's do that. I think these will, like, provide a slight, like, tangential benefits a lot of times over a run. Um, so it makes them quite hard to judge because you don't really get, like, those one big impacts that you get out of a lot of these. Um, but they, they will help you throughout a run, I suppose. Uh, lethality is, like, all bad all the time, right? No one likes this ability. It's terrible. This is just here. Um. What's this? Is this renewal? No, this is renewal. What's this? Life taker? The Mastery from Dark Bishop. Okay, yeah, this is garbage. Get out of the way. Lock Touch? Nope. Uh, Lucky Seven? Nope. Um, <laughs> it's good on Lauren's. Um, cool. <laughs> um, um, it doesn't just apply to spells, right? I guess so. It like also, it also, um, it also counts for Frozen Lance hits. There we go. My words failed me. Okay, I've never used Life Taker, but a couple of people are saying it's situationally useful, so I'll put it bottom of C. If I'm wrong, I really... I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> it can go there and we can be okay. Uh, Lock Touch is Ash's personal. It's also on Assassin, Trickster, Thief. Um, it makes me really sad that it's on Assassin and Trickster, because those classes need help, and instead they get Lock Touch. Mastermind is a skill because of your Ritzer. Thank you, because I was trying to figure out why this was on here. Slightly relevant, I guess? It's better than Counter. Lock Touch is a conven- I'm not even sure it's a convenience. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but like... Eh. Eh. It's Lysithia's personal, but I'm not factoring in the personal variant of it. I don't know, we can put it bottom of C tier. Again, if this is wrong, I'm- I'm- The problem is with your It's a Mastermind is it's only in combat, right? So like... Mmm, you would have- you'd have to like... Use him a lot in the six chapters he's available. To sort of get much out of it. It can be useful for getting his axes up quicker to go Wyvern Rider, I guess. Gauntlet of bad abilities coming up. Do we want to do pass and then we'll just rank all the other garbage in D tier? Um, let's put pass in A and just get rid of Miracle. Wait, how did I just move offensive tactics? That can go away. That can go away, that can go away. Anyone have any complaints about any of those? The skill behind alert stance. That's miracle, that's pomp and circumstance, that's lethality. This one, which I think was there, is offensive tactics. The tier for miracle called really annoying when the enemies have it. Poison strike should be in C. I think it's too out of the way to be in C. Poison strike, like, isn't that terrible, but for, like, being in, like, what, mastering dark mage, it's just... bad. And poison Strike on enemies can set up your wrath. That is actually true. <laughs> we can put it top of D. I mean, I'm not really tearing D, but we can put it top of D. Because it's only on males. Most males don't even want it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think it can go. Eh. 
I could maybe throw it bottom of C, but like Poison Strike being the same tier as like Dex plus four or Defiant Crit or Battalion Vantage seems really weird to me. I'm keeping it there. Yeah, if anyone doesn't know what those three are, they're the uh, the equivalent of the shields. These these three. Um, the enemy don't use enough effective weapons for them to be good, and they come super late in the game. It's like nullify flying, nullify cavalry, and nullify armor, or something like that. Prowess skills, right. Um, faith and authority prowess are the worst. Um, prowess, repost, and all of the rallies. Let's go. Axe prowess is really, really good. Bow prowess is really, really good. These two are hugely impactful. Um, bow is probably my favorite because you get the range drop, uh, the range deficit to hit when you're further away. This is a massive benefit to helping to counteract that. Um, when you're using things like Curve Shot or Hunter's Volley or things like that. This isn't just tier 5 of the prowesses. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I know it says the 5, but we're gonna be counting the full list of the prowess. So from level 1 to level 5. So these are available super early, obviously in a less impactful form. But they're still very beneficial in these early stages of the game. Um, is this controversial? I don't know. These are really good. Like, really, really good. You will literally use them throughout the entire game. Reason prowess is actually really relevant on a lot of units. Because magic isn't, like, kind of struggles in some cases for its accuracy. And you don't really have that many ways to amplify it. By the way, I put pass A tier. I'm not sure if I actually said it verbally, but pass is A tier. Uh, reason prowess can go... Better than these. Take it over Vantage. Take it over Bat Desperation. It's probably better than Fire. Probably better than Lance Fair. Let's put it there. Uh, I think Lance Prowess is... If this was just Lance Prowess 5, I would agree with arguing against Lance Prowess. But with how good Tempest Lance is in the early game, I think it has to be A tier. Because it's a massive amplifier to it. Like, just being able to hit those Tempest Lances for just more accuracy. Not to mention, as you go later in the game, Vengeance, Swift Strikes. Um, and obviously your enemy phasing Dimitri as well. Like, I think Lance Prowess has to be up there. Magic Prowess are the best, because it, since magic ignores terrain, fixing their shaky base accuracy is really strong. That is a good point. Probably has to be above pass. Pass is on three units, and one of them doesn't matter. Authority Prowess is, like, C tier. I can't be bothered to keep ordering C tier. It's better than this, 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 this. Probably not better than Defiant Avoid. Um, we'll put it above Dark Time Fight. You don't really care about Might on Gambits. Um, so, sure. It is, like, reasonably good, though. Like, it's plus two for every level, so at level five, it's plus ten. It's a reasonable number. Faith prowess? I mean, sh sure. Um, mages will probably run it for a decent portion of the game to make their Nosferatus or their Auras or whatever more accurate, their Abraxases. Sword prowess is actually relevant early game on quite a few units. It's probably at least, like, B tier somewhere. Brawling prowess is probably low A. The thing is, like, it is, like, really terrible to actually use, but when you have early slots early in the game, you will use it. Because every unit does have a gambit, and you probably will get some benefit out of it during a run. Because you will get authority prowess, because you just level authority anyway, right? So, like, it it's essentially comes for free, and units can benefit from it so i'll keep it in c tier but i don't know that's sketch it's definitely not as good as like poison strike but brawling prowess might be a little high brawling prowess should maybe like down here gauntlets are pretty accurate anyway and i think it has less hit than avoid the end is in sight we've only got less than three rows to go quick repost is way too high investment to be anywhere high um it comes from mastering war master so it's only available to half the cast as it is I don't know where to put Quick Repost. I don't think it's, like, bad, but I don't think it's good, and it's definitely not worth it, its investment. I think it might be top of C. It is a good skill. But I don't... I don't... I, 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 is it worth it when you get it? It's good on prot tanks. It's really good on prot tanks. Better on enemies than on your units is definitely true. Like, I don't see why you would ever run Quick Repost over just, like, better enemy phase builds. I think this is, like, perfectly fair. Like, it isn't bad. It's just worse than a lot of things you can have at this point in time. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, Desperation is player phase only, and 
Quick Repost is enemy phase only? If you could use Desperation with Quick Repost, that would be really, really good. Um, that would be absolutely fire, but you can't. So, <laughs> right, let's get the boring ones out of the way. Rally Resistance is bad. Um, okay, none of these are D tier because you can get them if you rally other things. Like, Rally Res on Annette will see use because her Rally Strength and Speed. Rally Movement is way too late in the game to be anything higher than low C tier. Is Rally Look on Flane and Anna, really? They don't get any other rallies, right? I'm not I'm not mistaken here, I don't think. Oh, and Alois gets it through his personal, but I'm not going to factor that variant in. Should I factor the personal rally variants in? I don't know, because that means then I have to, like, kind of factor in the personal ability of Mastermind, and that goes, like, up here somewhere, because it's insane on Life of Thea. Um, yeah, I'm not going to factor in the personal, so I'm not going to factor in Perseverance, Crest Scholar, or Compassion. Rally Charm is really good early, it's, like, at least B tier. Purely because of Dorothea, but yeah, it is really good. Rally defense is only on Seteth and Gilbert. They both come way too late for that to be useful. Go away. Um, they also don't get any other rallies to, like, combo them with. Yeah, rally defense is just bad. Seteth gets rally res. He gets rally res at S authority. He doesn't get rally res. Um, <laughs> Dex plus eight is, like, okay, I guess. It's, again, it's on Ignatz, which is a natural benefit to it. Um... We can throw it in C tier because, like, you will passively get this when you're rally speeding. Rally look is just going D tier. Rally moves should probably be down here. Yeah, it really should, right? Ignatz also does get rally speed, yeah. So, right, we've got the good three. Rally magic isn't up here. <laughs> All rallies are good because they build support points. Oh, everyone got rally move. It's called shove. That's really sad that it's true. Oh, God. I mean, I guess Rally Move applies at the same time as Rally Strength and Speed. The problem with Rally Move is that by the time you get Rally Move, the other rallies aren't really relevant. So the fact that it stacks with the other rallies on, like, Shove doesn't actually matter because who cares about 4 Strength or 4 Speed at, like, Chapter 20? Like, it's just not going to be... It's not going to be useful at that point in time. Reposition gives more move than Rally Move. I hate that you're right. Yeah, it's S rank on just a net. Um, Shig Shaker. But it's just a net. Byleth is not getting to S authority. It, it might as well just be S rank on a net. Like, no, it's not getting an S authority, Byleth. Just never happening. Rally magic is really nicely available. Um, even if we don't count Hanuman's, like, being on Constance and Huber is really nice. But then again, strength plus four is also... Oh, like, sorry, rally strength is also really available. Like, Raphael and Balthus is good. Gilbert is better at moving people than a net. Uh, you could probably get a net to the the he the the rank earlier too. The end is in sight though. We're nearly there. Um, we have a bunch of range abilities. This one goes here, and this is gonna really blow your mind. This one goes here. They're not there in those specific tiers, but um, bow range one is way more available than like all of this stuff. So it's better. Um, it's probably better than HP plus 5 when you have it. Let's put it there. Bow Range 2 is only on Bow Knight, which is an, a, a master class. Bow Range 1 is available from level 10. Like, for when you get it, this is just way more relevant. By the time you get Bow Range 2, you've got Strides, you've got Dancers, you've got, like, all your movement abilities, everyone's an innate move class. Range just matters a lot less. By the time you get Bow Range 2, it's just a lot less relevant than Bow Range 1 was. Um, and plus, every single physical unit will go through Archer. Every single unit will benefit from Bow Range plus one. Um, the same cannot be said for Bow Range plus two. Bow Range plus two is the reason you go Bow Knight. Uh, Bow Range plus two with Bowfare and Kanto is really, really good. Um, in terms of its general abilities, Bow, uh, Bow Knight has a really good spread. Um, Bow Range plus two is not here, by the way. It's better than, like, half of this nonsense, but... I'd put it like there. I'd say it's worse than Fire. Fire's just way too available. Um, only being available from level 30 in a relatively niche masterclass, I would say, is um, a bit of a hindrance, but it is good when it shows up. Uh, faith magic plus, or white magic range plus one is basically irrelevant. Don't you get these at like S authority, or S for the spell rank or something? Yeah, it is S. Oh, it's in, these are in Valkyrie, dark magic's in Valkyrie anyways, black magic? It's been so long since I've used it. Actually, I'm using a Valkyrie in a playthrough I'm doing right now. That was very nearly just not true. But Caduceus confuses me. I just looked over at my chat and saw a bunch of people saying S rank. 
And I thought you meant that you wanted me to put the tome, like the bow rangers in S tier, and I thought there was just this mad outcry for like the support of the bow or the spell range abilities to go into S tier, and I was about to lose my mind. <laughs> like I was like, wait, why is everyone telling me that these mage range abilities are S tier? No, like how much educating do I have to do on this game? <laughs> Um, these are actually perfectly valid, so they wouldn't be good if Valkyrie didn't exist, but, like, because Valkyrie does exist, they're actually okay. They're not going higher than C tier. Um, S rank locked apart from female units who go in a specific class of questionable usefulness, but they can be high in C tier. We can put them here. They're, they're pretty good. We, we take them. Yeah, no, these belong, these belong up here, right? Like, that's, that's why we do them. That's, that's why they belong. Oh god, we've got the Amiibo song again. Uh, this is Renewal, right? This is bad. Go away. Nope, go away. Haven't we already done Model Leader? Sacred Power. Okay. Do they have the same icon? Or they do have the same icon. Fortunately, this one goes here. Is it here? Because it's not actually bad, right? But it's not... not... good. Like, it... It is good. But you don't actually want it. Like, it's 100 class A XP in an enlightened one. If you do or uh, Orcs battles, actually, I guess this is pretty attainable, because it's not class locked, right? Uh, with that in mind, we'll put it, like, low low C tier. It can go directly below the other, the other one of those and confuse everyone who looks at this in just, like, a screenshot. I don't know. I think it's probably fine if you get it. I just don't think you actually want to go out there and get it, which sounds pretty similar to, like, Life Taker, Mastermind, like some of these defiant abilities. It's locked to buy left, but not enlightened one, but you have to master enlightened one to get it, yeah. Okay, let's just do this, because seal movement is the worst ability in the game. It's not, but it makes me sad. There's a really... I don't know if I shared this in the Discord, or if I've only shared it in other places, but I was talking to, uh, to Lux once, and I was looking up seal movement, and I just googled seal movement, and it just came up with a bunch of results of seals moving. Like, and I think it was called, like, galumphing. Um, and yeah, it was really funny. Um, I'll see if I can dig out the screenshot and, um, and put it in the, the Discord. The galumphing seals. So, seal defense and seal speed are actually pretty solid. I'm gonna do these one at a time because I don't necessarily remember who gets all of them. There's a budding talent for Ferdinand and Hilda. Um, which is actually, you know, two units who are perfectly fine going into heavy armor anyway. Um, they probably will pick this up. Um, speed minus six when you hit with it is pretty useful. It's, you know, a reasonable early game ability. It can be the difference maker between some doubles. I'd say it's probably, like, reasonably okay in C tier. It's probably around, like, where dex plus four is. It's better than dex plus four, but it's also a lot more limited. Seal defense is Wyvern Rider Mastery, which is very attainable, but a little late for it to be, like, overly useful. Um, that being said, it does still have some, like, fringe benefits. Um... I think someone else gets this as well, right? Let me... I spelt defense the European way and it didn't like it. Oh no, it's just the Wyvern Rider Mastery. Okay, I thought it came from something else too. Um, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I mean, it's available enough, right? Like, Wyvern Rider is a good class. But it's just not... It doesn't retain its usefulness by the point in the game when you get it. It's probably better than some of this, but... C tier is very generally, like, loosely sorted. It's not really done at all. That is a good point. Seal speed is also important for stealing, um, especially on Chapter 7 to get the, the stuff from the house leaders. Flame gets seal magic. Pretty sure she's the only one. Let's just double check that. And if that's the case, we can put it in D tier. Uh, yep. Flame gets it from her budding talent in Reason. I mean, you probably will get it and it isn't that bad, but like it's one unit who isn't very good. Um, and isn't really an offensive powerhouse anyway. Like, Flane is just going to be rescuing things and stuff like that. Like, uh, seal defense... Uh, sorry, seal resistance is just too infrequently useful to actually be good. Seal strength is only from Ignatz's reason budding talent. Okay. Let's just put that there so it isn't there, and then we'll take it out at the end. Uh, special dance is probably like A tier, right? Like, your dancer is always going to use it. It's really solid. It is true, right? Like, why would you not use it? But it does only boost, like, deck speed and luck. Like, speed is nice, but, like... Dex and luck don't really matter. They're nice to have, like, don't get me wrong, like, but they're not super relevant stats. Um, you are going to use it in every run. And, like, your dancer is going to use it every time they dance. 
but its, it's benefit is questionable. There'll be a lot of times that it doesn't do anything. It is still good, though. It's literally free as well. Like, what else is your dancer using? When you have it, it is used. It isn't available until, what, like, chapter, like, 11 or so, though, right? Because you have to master dancer. Um, so it's, it's not like it's available for the entire game. It's pretty much only available for, like, the back half. I'm just checking something with steel. Okay, so you only have to be higher speed. If I'm not mistaken, it's a direct speed check, right? It's not attack speed. I mean, it's probably, like, low seed here. It's useful for stealing, like, the Chapter 7 boss stuff and things like that, but, like, by and large, it's not doing that much. I don't know. There's, there's a couple of things that are worth stealing throughout the course of the game, um, but it isn't, it isn't completely useless, but it's not good either. Don't know, that's about where I fall on that one. Uh, stealth? I am not a fan of. I know a lot of people are really huge on stealth, but for me personally, it's not great. I wish... Okay, so I was thinking about stealth yesterday because I think it came up in conversation when we were talking about something. I wish stealth was toggleable. Like, you know how you can dismount your mounted units? I wish I could... Um, I wish I could, like, uncloak in stealth. But st it's just... It's tied to mediocre class. Well, a bad class and a mediocre class. And, like, a lot of the times I won't want my unit to not be targeted. Like, especially in Assassin, sometimes I will want them to take an attack. Like, if you could carry it around, that would be good. If you could disable it, it would be good. But I, I don't really... Like, if this was on Dancer or Bishop, we would be having a different conversation right now. But it's on Assassin and Trickster. Like, these aren't necessarily classes I want to not get targeted. These aren't... Well, Trickster has utility, I suppose. But, like... Assassin isn't a utility class, that's a combat class, and it's a class that might actually be okay at enemy phasing. Uh, I'm putting it there. I don't think this is good. Shade Iliana, let's go. If Provoke was in this game, oh my god, we would be having a conversation. Provoke on your enemy phase units, beautiful. Uh, terrain resistance is borderline useless. If this got rid of movement penalties, this would be like up here somewhere. Like, Paladin would be goaded, we would be having a great conversation. It doesn't. It's bad. Go away. Transmute. Grant strength plus three magic dexterity speed to plus three to all stats if the foe initiates combat and uses a magic attack. And you get it by mastering Dark Flyer or innately in Dark Flyer. This is way too situational to be good, right? Like, way too situational. Assassin Caspar for a void plus ten on bosses might be fun. Oh my god. I don't know. I don't think this is particularly ever going to be too game-changing. Does it only last for the enemy phase, or does it last until the until the end of the unit's phase? So it's in, until the end of the next player phase, right? Am I understand? Am I reading that correctly? I haven't used this ability. I've used well, I have because I've used dark flyers, but like I've not made use of this ability to my knowledge. We'll throw it above stealth. Unarmed combat is not no bad. Okay, Faith Magic minus 5, or times... Faith Magic times 2 is, um, minus 5? Where did that come from? Faith Magic times 2 is S tier. Um, I think that's fairly undebatable. Uh, 2 Warps is really, really good. Dark Magic and Black Magic times 2 are kind of mediocre. I think Black Magic is also on Warlock, right? Yeah, so it's on Grem and Warlock. Uh, Dark Magic is definitely above Black Magic. I think this is actually kind of butts. Um, yeah, the, the White Magic uses is easily... Easy S. Easy S. Uh, black magic and dark magic just really aren't that relevant. Dark magic is better because the dark magic spells are better, like double uses of dark spikes or Luna or actually pretty much just those two. I guess Banshee maybe is like actually good. Hades maybe, like this is maybe like here perhaps. Like double dark spikes will actually be relevant on some of like Verdant Wind 22. Um, you can actually get reasonable use out of that. There's, this is just bad. Double uses of Dark Magic, of Dark Spice and Lunar is actually relevant. This is like here-ish, maybe even here-ish, honestly. Black Magic is actually just terrible. <laughs> if you're still using Black Magic spells by this point in the game, like en masse, I'm questioning why. But like, you can double bolting a Meteor, but like, bolting a Meteor aren't actually that good. Like, they're super situational spells as it is. Um... And the only good Bolting user has the Crest of Noah, which can already give her more casts. Like, Bolting definitely has its uses, like, it's a good spell situationally. 
But I don't think I've ever been at a point where I need that many uses of it per map. So free source of EXP, but it's a very roundabout free source of EXP. Uh, bolting is really useful for, like, sniping certain drops. Like, the one that I always bring up is sniping the rapier in, cha in uh, oil and water. Um, like, it's really good for specific things like that. It's good for baiting over certain problematic groups of enemies that, like, you just need to get moving. Uh, it's good for chipping down certain things that can be, like, just awkward to hit. Um, or just, like, might need a couple of attacks. Like, it can be a very safe way to do that. But I, I it's a 13 might spell. Like... I want to say Constance's crest activation rate is 20%. Constance is better as a dart flyer anyway. Yes, agreed. She has the major crest at 20%. Cool. Um, it's definitely better than, like, stealth, by the way. It's better than, like, a lot of this, to be fair. Because um, a lot of this is just kind of bad. But probably better than all. Authority priority is way too high. I'm sorry. I, I'm only loosely ordering this, but authority priority is not better than a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it's good for taking out battalion class users as well. Although, I question it's one-shot power. But, like... It can definitely one-shot some annoying battalion users, like the uh, Ambusher ALL Archers really spring to mind. There's a couple of really annoying battalion users on that map that, like, you can snipe out with bolting. But the fact that we are only discussing bolting for Black Magic uses times two really sums up my opinion on Black Magic uses times two. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a questionably... Like, it's on the low end of useful as far as spells go. Um, like, it's not bad by any means. It's not even average. It's above average. But it, it's definitely not great. It's not warp. And that's pretty much the only spell where it's really useful. Like, I would even say Meteor isn't that impactful on. I'm about to start a comment war about Constance again. I know I am, but I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm done arguing about Constance for a bit in, in the comments of my videos. The, the, two, the tier list and the Constance breakdown have been... Chaotic. 40 uses of fire is a good point, actually. I'd love 40 uses of fire. <laughs> Meteor is literally just linked to type fodder, yeah, pretty much. It's again, it's got the same uses of like baiting enemies over and things like that, but like it's it's not it's not good enough to be good. Weight minus five is like somewhere like high, like mid to high C. It's just way too out of the weight way to get it. Um uh, no, it actually being available in Fortress Knight is actually reasonably relevant to like a certain degree. Um but it's not great. Um, weight minus three is actually good. Um, like, really good. Like, probably, like, here. It's relevant on a lot of units. Like, weight minus three is actually kind of relevant on a good amount of units. Weight minus three is A tier to a couple of people here. I honestly could see it. Um, I'm not... The, the thing is, like, it's really accessible on a lot of units, and it is impactful on a lot of units. I'm just not sure how long that impact holds its weight. No pun not intended. Um from a lot of those units, right? So, like, it's really good, for, like, in certain sections, for example, on, like, Hilda and Edelgard, but I'm not sure how long it stays good on them. Um, weight minus five is pretty relevant on Great Knight Annette since she has low strength and axes are heavy. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I will take your word for it. That is the other thing. It is, like, sort of, like, you can get it on... Oh, sorry, you can... You can get Armor Knight on the way to it, so it's not that you're just investing in heavy armor for this. Being able to class Armor Knight is good. It's only 15 strength in terms of weapon weight. Um, like, because, yes, 15 strength for weapon weight will be relevant for a bit, but, like, how often will that three extra attack speed allow you to outspeed things or to not get doubled is the real question, because for a lot of units, it will fall off kind of quickly. Um, or you will be doubling anyway is the other thing. Once you get things like Darting Blow, you enter that mid-game stage where they start giving everyone steel weapons that they can't hold, um, and they all just get weighed down. You could, you could either double them without the weight minus three, or you would get doubled anyway. You need to specifically have that three attack speed mattering for doubling the enemies, and I don't think that's quite, like, that's quite common enough for it to be A tier or higher in B tier. Um... It probably is more relevant than Battalion Desperation and Bow Range Plus 2. I will I will at least grant you that. That is probably fair. Yes, yeah, so you can, like, if you're just wanting to avoid getting doubled on the enemy phase and you're not overly fussed about the damage, you can also, like, just use a weaker weapon or unequip. I think it is good. Like, and it, do it is an impactful ability. I don't want to, like, make it out like it isn't impactful at all. But I just think its, it's effectiveness sort of isn't consistent. Maybe move Seal Strength to at least low C, since Ignarts can stack it with Break Shot. It still is only on Ignarts, though, right? Like, from mastering his Reason Budding talent. It has its uses. I don't know. We can put it there. 
So that about wraps up the tier list. If you want to discuss any parts of it, please feel free to do so in the comments or in the Discord. Obviously, debates and things like that are all completely fine and welcomed, but please keep it civil. It's only Fire Emblem. That is all I ask. Other than that, thank you again to the people who have pledged their support on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, and I will catch you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.